So we're in a world of increasing opportunities and uh, creative aspects of last mile delivery. Um, so we have this really cool Vallejo e-deliver for you thing. It's like, yeah, the idea is an autonomous delivery system with little packets and places you can hide packages. And we also have this tiny little one right here, which essentially is a way that you can carry small pieces of cargo or imagine walking around an airport with your luggage following you. So I'm here to talk to some of the engineers on the team and see what this is all about and how the artificial intelligence and self-driving aspects actually work. All right, I have my friend Deep here. And Deep, what do you do here? So basically, I'm a deep learning software engineer working at Valio in California office. Awesome. And today I am uh, demonstrating two of our mobility solutions. One is for delivery purpose and the other one is for mobility kits, which is about our sensors. We can sell one sensors and we can sell a bunch of other sensors to any of the uh, companies. Awesome. So yeah, what do you see as the real world use cases for something like this? So basically, it depends upon the type of the uh, vehicle it is. For example, if we are doing a small delivery robots, which is running on the sidewalk, we can uh, use this kind of small form factor based robot and our sensors are compatible with any, any kind of uh, delivery robots, either this kind of small sidewalk robot or this kind of big uh, robots which are running on the bike lane or running on the main uh, roads. Awesome. Um, so how is this actually controlled? I saw that you were earlier playing with it manual mode and also like fully autonomous mode. And the idea eventually is fully autonomous everywhere. Yes. Uh, and so while you're developing it, what is the uh, proficiency and use case for manual mode? Is that to like can calibrate certain things or see yes. what it does? Uh, so basically uh, this robot is capable of doing all the things which an autonomous uh, robot would be able to do because it has all the sensors which is needed for doing an autonomous driving without any human input. It has cameras, it has lidars, it has ultrasonic sensors, which is parking sensors and everything. And uh, the main reason why we are having a remote controller for now is to just navigate it here and there and putting it on the track. Awesome. So yeah, I see it's on this little track right here and it, uh, I guess can see the lanes and stay within them. Um, do you want to show us how that works? Sure, definitely. So I will like to introduce uh, my colleague okay. and he will uh, get in the frame and he will try to show us Lane detection mode. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, would you mind coming up? Yeah. Okay. So now we will be engaging this into an autonomous mode where it will try to follow the lane and be in the lane and drive by itself. Awesome. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's run. So now, as we can see, now it is in autonomous mode. Yeah. And it is using the cameras. Yeah, so uh, we're not touching anything. Yeah, yeah we are not touching anything. And it is using Velio 1 megapixel fisheye cameras. Okay. And it is for trying to do all those processing, everything on the droid. There is no cloud processing, nothing. And it is processing in real time. It is trying to find the lanes. Where are the lanes? And it is trying to center itself in the center of the lane. And how many frames per second is it calculating? It's a, it's a 30 frames per second. Okay. So which is like 33 milliseconds. Yeah. Oops, oops, oops. It got confused because of the <laughs> multiple lanes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have two tracks here. <laughs> yeah. So the bigger one is for the big droid. So oh, it yeah. got just confused. Yeah. It also have a pedestrian following. So it will follow. So so the idea here is uh, uh, you have a delivery and sometimes your uh, product is package is very huge so you can put on a droid and then it, it will follow you. That's great, yeah. So, so here uh, yeah. I will demonstrate uh, production following. Yeah. So so what he will do is now he will try to walk in front of yes, the robot. Uh, you can see eyeballs. Oh yeah, yeah. eyeballs on the screens, okay. Yes. <laughs> So, so now since uh, he is already in the frame and he started it in uh, pedestrian follower mode, now it is uh, the robot is trying to follow him. So the main, uh, there are different use cases for this uh, particular application. One is like if you are doing a delivery. Yeah. And uh, package is too big. Pa pa package is too <laughs> big, like FedEx or something, a big package. You can use uh, this kind of big delivery robot to your curb. And from the curb, you can use this kind of small delivery robot and it will follow you to the doorstep. Yep. So it's for like real last mile delivery. The other use case would be if you are on an airport terminal and if you are having like two large big bags, 50 pounds or so, yeah. and you need not have to have a cart because now 
the robot would itself be a cart and it will try to follow you. Yep. And here we are using, as I mentioned, the, our sensors, our cameras. So our cameras are using uh, deep learning algorithms, which is doing pedestrian following. And also we are using our near field LiDAR, which is ensuring that uh, it doesn't run over you. It's doing automatic emergency braking, just in case if it is very close to you, it will apply the brakes no matter what. Wow, so yeah, very very safe. And so if you, if you wanted to go walk a dog and you don't have a dog, you can yeah. just take this out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Can, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so this is the robot, and we uh, let's go to the screen and see what actually the robot would see. See what it's seeing, okay, yeah. great. So this is our like uh, visualization uh, display where we are able to see what exactly the robot would see. So all the four screens on the top is from our fisheye cameras. Mm -hmm. So here we can see the, uh, Jagdish, can you try to move? So yeah, it's a real time feed yeah. and we are feeding it to the screen so that just in case if you are curious, oh, is your robot working well or not? You can just pop up your camera, uh, mobile phone and see, okay, it's working well. And here we can see all the 3D uh, sensors we are having. Uh, we are having four of the near field LIDARs and we are merging it. We are fusing the data into one frame and all the white points are from our near field, four uh, near field LIDARs. And the green ones you are seeing is our mid-range and the uh, long-range LiDAR, which is able to see as far as like 100 meters or more. Wow. And everything is fused together into one scene. And all these uh, phones which you are seeing is from our ultrasonic sensors, which is uh, commonly known as parking sensors. Yeah. And it is also doing like a free space thing. So the main aim for us to show all these things along with this is we are selling our sensors as a single sensor or as a sensor suit and it, the customers can be of any kind of company from a small startup doing autonomous driving to a big startup or a big company and they can use our sensors on small droid on a delivery robot or any of our uh, vehicles which we see on the roads this is really fascinating um, especially the part where you're walking around an airport and you have a giant bag and you're in let's say phoenix and you have 18 miles to get to your next terminal this thing just following you around with your bag would be awesome uh, but this is fascinating. I mean, it's similar to people who have seen like, you know, Tesla keynotes where they talk about full self-driving and light, like real time imaging and what the sensors are seeing. Uh, I love this stuff and I love what you know, engineers like Deep are doing because it's really fascinating. It's really needed in a world where autonomous driving and autonomous last mile delivery is exploding. One last thing before we end the video, it's Kyle behind the camera. I just wanted to mention some of the frame rate stuff. I had noticed on the screen, it was a little bit laggy. I don't think that's anything to do with this unit, at least based off of my impression after talking to the guys. It sounds like they're doing some sort of pretty basic wireless transmitting over to the TV and it made it look laggy. Uh, the cameras themselves will, will um, basically process at 30 frames per second per camera. The short range LiDAR, I guess using the ultrasonic sensors or perhaps it's full LiDAR, uh, that's 30 frames per second. And the long range LiDAR is 25 frames per second. So overall, I think that's a pretty good sensor kit. Don't let the TV screen lag and fool you there. That's pretty cool. And I love that you can buy them as a set of one if you want to play around as a prosumer, if you will, and all the way up to, I'm sure, as many as uh, you can order for a full-on production build. But love these small little delivery systems that are coming out.